Hi, I'm, I'm Dr. David Crilly. I'm the Artistic Director of the Cambridge Shakespeare Festival and have been for the last 36 years. What we try to do is recreate the experience of coming to Elizabethan Theatre. That is, and I don't mean by that that we copy the things that happened at the time. We try to recreate the effect of coming to an Elizabethan Theatre. Uh, and, and it's open air, of course, as Shakespeare's performances all were at the Globe Theatre. The audience tended to be local people to, to Cambridge and Oxford, where we also used to perform. But now um, we have followers from all over the world. There's a large number of, uh, of Chinese students who come to the uh, performances. The first visit of the Cambridge Shakespeare Festival to China was in 2019. Uh, we visited Shanghai, but then we travelled out to Fuzhou to take part in the Tang Xinzhu uh, uh, Drama Festival. We took productions of Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet out to the Fuzhou Opera House and then to uh, one of the more ancient uh, environments in the temple, and then we performed in a park. It was very informative and huge amount of fun and a great opportunity to cross-fertilise our, our cultures. One of the things that was uh, a very positive thing in our, on our trip in 2019 is that because we were in, performing in different settings and we were having to think of different ways of presenting, when we experienced the, the stylization of the drama in Kun Opera, we thought that, that that was something that we could adapt into our performances, and that was something that might resonate with the audience more effectively, and it, and it seemed to work. Especially with the Peony Pavilion, yes, because the, 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 the plot is very similar to Romeo and Juliet. So they the, the kind of accidentally come across the same eternal uh, theme of the, the, the love between the, the, the young people and what happens when other, other things get in the way of that. Shakespeare is at the core of uh, Western uh, culture and certainly drama and anything in the English language. Shakespeare is at the heart of that. And Tang Xinzhu, uh, similarly, uh, the, the, the way in which the, those ideas are presented, the traditional uh, operatic uh, gestural uh, aesthetic is, is um, it seems to me, to be at the heart of that, even with uh, modern Chinese uh, settings of things because it's all about, the, again, the psychology and the presentation of ideas in a, in a really kind of, uh, in a really direct and um, simple way. We realise the importance of gesture and how to, uh, how to get ideas across. And so that performance was completely different to anything that we'd done before. And I told the actors to really exaggerate the physical gestures and the articulation of how they spoke to make sure that the meaning of, each, of what they were saying and the characterization would come across in, in that way. That was the kind of feeling I had, that the, the, it was the, the, the psychology, the internal drama of the characters is uh, much more central in a Chinese setting than it is in um, the, the West, where it tends to be what people say to each other, how people communicate, rather than what's happening internally. The benefit of cross-cultural exchange in these things is simply a, a chemical one. It's like chemistry. If, we, if we're able to add elements of different cultures to the other culture, then it can only enrich. It will, it will add something to, to each. So both cultures will benefit from the experience of the, of the other. And we'll take or leave those aspects which are most of use. I suppose, thinking from an artistic perspective, it's the addition of a whole range of different colours on a palette. We can see what, what each has to offer and we can take things, select things that will enable us to do things in a slightly different, more informed, a more universal way. The two experiences that I had of um, the People's Theatre in Beijing and then the Kun Opera in Nanjing really encapsulated both approaches, it seems to me, in my limited experience of, of uh, Chinese theatre at the moment. The modern portrayal of the psychology of the drama, where the characters and their movement are modernised, or the a familiar kind of movement and articulation of, the, of language. Whereas the, the, the Kun Opera is very much a stylized and historical approach to things. One of the things that I noticed was how one informed the other. We spoke to the director 
of the People's Theatre in Beijing and, uh, and one of their main actors, uh, Mr. Yu. And we spoke about the possibility of taking a production out to perform at the, at the theatre and also for them to, to bring a production over to the UK to perform actually as, as a kind of um, arm of the Cambridge Shakespeare Festival because one of the things that we noted is that many of the themes of, of the dramas in China have echoes of the plays that we're performing in the Shakespeare Festival. One of the things that I was invited to do when I was in Beijing was to become the chairman of the new uh, China-UK Performing Arts Association, which I was very happy to do. And I, I look forward to the collaborations that will come from that new development. For me, personally, the, the whole idea of immersing myself into a different culture is something which is really important for everyone to, to have the opportunity to do. And I'm very keen to uh, engage with the development of those sorts of collaborations. And I think through play and through drama and through music, we reconnect with that imaginative strand of ourselves and our childish impulse to be something else. And what we end up realising is that, if, if I can use a musical analogy, is that, is that we might all be singing in different languages and in different styles, but as human beings, we're all singing the same song.